Hi guys, in this video we're going to revisit Gravit for cutting out photos. So this is sort of an update to my older video about using Gravit to cut out photos using the pen tool. Let's jump right in. So I've gotten this question a lot on my previous video about using Gravit to cut out photos or objects using the pen tool. And I want to make this video specifically in response to Frank and anyone else who's asked this question about my previous video using Gravit to cut out photos. And we're going to do it together right now. So I've just loaded up Gravit here in my web browser. First thing I'm going to do, just in case you're not aware of this, I'm going to make this easier on my eyes and hopefully yours as well and go up here to the edit menu down to settings. And then right here where it says change the theme of Gravit Designer, I'm going to change this from the light theme to the dark theme. Click Save Changes and ooh, that's so much better for me. Okay, so let's just grab a photo and jump right in. I'm using Unsplash to get great photography. I'm just going to grab the low resolution version and I'm just picking a random picture here. But this is commonly what I'm getting asked about is cutting out photos of people or objects from those photos. So I'm just copying that to the clipboard. I'm just using the blog graphic um, preset for my size here. Really doesn't matter for this tutorial what size my canvas is. I'll paste in my image right here into Gravit. I'll zoom in holding down control and using the mouse wheel. I can zoom in and out. Hold down spacebar and I can pan the image around or pan the canvas or range area around in the viewport. Okay. I'm going to zoom in quite a bit here and start right here with one of the corners where her shoulders go off the screen and hit P on my keyboard to grab the pen tool, plot my first point, and I'm going to use the method. It's the quickest way that I know to get really nice, smooth Bezier curves is to try to not create them in the initial shape. I'm only going to plot my anchor points where I want to have line segments that I'm going to then push like silly putty or clay into the right position. So this just takes practice and trial and error and knowing what you're wanting to achieve. So you can see how I do it here. Anywhere where I want to have a bend or a curve, I'm going to plot a node or a curve. Now, this is also, we're getting right up here, this, see this little piece of hair where it's disconnected and you can see some of the background through that. So it's a, it's a little sliver that we want to cut out from our initial shape. We're going to tackle that because that was another question I had. When you have a piece of a shape, it's not a solid shape. There's things within, within that shape like Swiss cheese. There's holes inside of the shape. I'm going to show you how to tackle those in just a minute. First of all, I'm going to ignore it. So I'm just going to keep going around the perimeter of what I want cut out first. So I'm going to do this as quickly as I can, making a little bit of a loose cutout, making things a little bit simpler for myself if I can by not getting all of the details that I could. This is a low resolution image anyway, so the more I zoom in, the blurrier it's going to look. Continue plotting my points here, right down here at the next corner, and then all the way across connecting my initial anchor point. And then we get this shape, and it's covering up our image. Don't worry, this is why I'm doing this video. I'm going to turn off the border because the border can get weird because it covers up the edge that I really want to be able to see so that I get a nice good cut. So you can either just hide it with the eyeball right over here in the properties panel. That's probably not on the screen because my face is in the way. Let me go ahead and hide this. Now you should be able to see it. And I'm going to change my fill color to a pink or a red and then take down my opacity. Let's just make it 70. And now we can barely see the image through which means we can see very clearly what we're going to keep and what we're going to get rid of. Now I'm going to hit D on my keyboard for the sub selection tool or the direct selection tool. And in between my anchor points, I'm going to hover over the line, click and drag, and I can just pull these curves right into place. And I can mess with the handles so that I can change the steepness of the curve. I'm going to try to keep some pixels outside of my cut of the subject so that I don't get a weird blue halo or whatever the color of the background happens to be. I don't want a halo effect, so I'm going to kind of cut conservatively here. So I'm just grabbing the line segment between my points and clicking and dragging to pull it 
into place. I'm not going to bother with this strand of hair. We'll get to that inside cut in just a minute. I'm just going to push my curves out to the outer edge of my subject here. You can see I'm taking some liberties just to, again, make it a little bit easier on myself and to get a nice, I'm going to, I'm going to overcut here in the neck so that I can push it back out just a little bit and make sure I don't have any of that halo. Okay. And that's it for me. Now, before I do the cutout, I want to address this inside cut here. And I can still kind of see it with a semi-transparent layer here if you need to bring the transparency down a little bit more because we're going to create another shape on top of this to use as a punch through our vector shape. So again, I'm going to P on the keyboard to select the pen tool, or you can click it right up here. And I'm just going to draw the section that I want to punch out of my shape. So click, and this one I will click and drag to quickly create a shape. You can hold control and click on your anchor point to change the direction of that joint, or you can change it right up here as well in the properties panel. And I think that'll work. So there's my shape. Now I've got three objects over here in my layers panel, right? I've got the path I just created. So I'm going to use that and punch a hole through my vector shape. Then I've got my vector shape. That's the perimeter of everything that I want to keep. First thing we need to do is create a compound path. So I'm going to select both of these. The easiest way to, to, to see that these are selected is use the layers panel and you can select your first layer. There it is. Hold control or shift and select your next layer. So I have two layers selected. I can zoom out a little bit to see the bounding box around that to make sure that those are both selected. Then I'm going to go up to this icon right up here. It says create compound shape, drop down the arrow. And what we want to do is subtract the path that's on top from the path that's underneath. So I'm going to use subtract and you can see now we have that little punch out. So now we can see again, our background or our photo behind this vector shape. Now, this still doesn't work in Gravit Designer. I can't just clip my photo into a compound shape. I have to convert this to a simple shape so that I can use that, that single vector path as my cookie cutter for my image. So over here in the layers panel, you'll see that what we have now is a group folder called compound shape. If I toggle that down, you can see we've got our path on top that's being cut out and our path underneath. This will not work unless you do this step. So if you've created a compound path, you're going to have to convert this to a simple path before you try to cut out the photo. So in the layers panel, it's really easy to do. Right click on this new compound path, grouped shape layer, and choose convert to path. The shortcut key for that is control shift and P. Now we can see we've got the pen tool icon Instead of a compound path, we have a simple path. Now these nodes are still editable. If I hit D on my keyboard to get the sub select tool or the direct selection tool, you can see that we can still edit our paths both inside and outside of the vector path. Okay. Now for the whole point really of this video is instead of messing with the clip button that I mentioned before in a previous video, all you really need to do is drag the image over in the layers panel on top of your path in the layers panel, drag it and hover over until you see now it's highlighted in pink release, and you're going to get instantly a cutout. Let's do that again. So I'm going to hit control Z to undo it. I'm going to grab my image, my pasted photo or whatever it is that you're trying to cut the background out from in the layers panel, click and drag your image on top of your path layer until it's highlighted in pink and then release. And it's going to do exactly this clip that photo into that vector shape. And we even have the little piece that we cut out of the hair there. So just to show you that this is now a transparent background where it's clipping the entire image inside of this vector path. I'll just hit R on the keyboard to get a rectangle. I'm going to drag it out 
And then in the layers panel, I can just drag and drop it underneath my photo now. Let's bring our opacity back all the way up. And now we can change our color to anything we want. And you can see that we can see through this photo now exactly where we clipped it. This is also still editable. I can edit my cut. I can double click to sort of quickly get into editing the path again. And there's a, a straight line here that I didn't quite get right. I need to curve that in just a little bit right where her shoulder and neck meet. So I can still do the adjusting after the fact and get really nice, smooth, clean cutouts. There's a little bit of the background here where her hair is. Again, I can double click and then get back in here to readjust some of my curves. Double click out of it and now we can move our now cutout image like a single object. It's just a group now with that image inside of our vector path. Hope that's helpful and I hope that answers several questions that people have had about Gravit Designer. It's still a great tool. I am only using the free version of it for this video. It's the same version that anybody else has access to. Uh, you can still do this technique with the free version and you can do it right inside the web browser. Frank, thanks again for the question. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.